right. Always good to have you uh, watch this and uh, be part of this family. Thank you for always coming to practice. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your support. Uh, we're doing great. And uh, I'm practicing. What you can do with the power of your voice. And uh, we are always here to practice, we are always here to learn, and we are always here to give a voice to the voiceless. You can do more if you practice. Public speaking is all about practice. The more you practice, you learn to practice, you can do more. So if you are here, and you would like to practice your speech, you would like to practice your voice, just come up on stage and uh, take the opportunity to practice. You can do more if you practice. Public speaking, remember, it's all about practice. It's all about creating opportunities. It's all about believing in you and taking the next step. So today we are going to take the next step. And the next step is all about practicing. The power of practicing, the power of creating opportunities, the power of leveraging and doing more. So you can practice. You can do more. If you can practice, you can create opportunities. If you can practice, you can create a leverage to reach out to more people and uh, to do more in terms of like the power of your voice. So let's go up. Let's practice. Let's create opportunities. And let's believe that yes, it's possible. So if you want to practice, just come up on stage and uh, we will practice. So today we have PowerPoint presentations. Uh, we have also some people who will be coming to practice. Now, before we go on, I just want to share with you some basic things that you need to know about public speaking. So, Abdul, Abdul there are basic things that you need to know about public speaking. And these are some of the things that you, once you get to understand and appreciate them, you can do more. Speaking is all about creating opportunities, creating leverage, and doing more of your voice. So, welcome, Abdul. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Right, right. It's a pleasure having you today. I think it's the first time. And uh, thank um, you. For... I'll be monitoring you, and uh, I know you are doing an amazing work in coaching uh, a lot of us to right. be able to perfect our public speaking. Great, great. So, welcome once again. And uh, maybe you can tell us a little about what you do and uh, how you do what you do. All right, so um, my name is Abdel, and um, I'm a health professional. Um, basically, I specialize in community health. Um, I work with, you know, Zipline. Zipline is uh, an international NGO uh, specializing in delivering essential medical logistics to how to reach uh, health facilities, yeah. So my role at Zipline is basically to interact with stakeholders, to bring them to speed with what we do as a company. So it's more like integrating Zipline into the various communities of Ghana. Yeah. Wow. So on the side, I'm also a practicing nurse. Um, I'm a nurse by training, actually. Yeah. So basically, that's uh, what I do. I love to speak um, and I love to learn as well. Yeah. Right. Nice having you here. And I always appreciate meeting new people and connecting with people to give them a voice. And I believe that together we can create synergy and give the world a voice that it deserves. So my name once again is Brian Mustafa. If you are listening, we are, I am live on LinkedIn, live on YouTube, and live on Facebook. So just come up here, practice your speaking. So Abdul, maybe it is your first time. So do you have some initial questions that you want to uh, ask? Um, yes, yeah, so I have a couple of questions, um, maybe to start with. I know that one of the main challenges of uh, speakers, especially, is got to do with the very uh, preliminary stages of their, of, of their speaking, right? So, I mean, I know it's very common to be able to have some butterflies in your tummy when you are meeting, um, you know, an audience for the very first time. Um, right. I also know before you meet your audience, there's a need for you to do some preparations, um, right. knowing your audience and, you know, channeling the kind of message or planning the kind of message you want to uh, deliver and planning what you want to say. Um, right. 
I just would like to learn from you um, what works best for you in terms of uh, managing, you know, uh, butterflies in your tummy, especially with the very preliminary stages of your uh, public speaking. Yeah, if you can share. Right, right. Thank you very much once again. And uh, there are a lot of variables to this. And also, I realized that there's no one thing that you can hold your hands to to say that this is what has worked. Because in my experience, as uh, when I started speaking 10 years ago, and, uh, like there were stages that I uh, used to be afraid of, right? Especially my first uh, appearance on GTV Live. It was scary. It was like 10 years ago, right? There, were, there was this program uh, and they were going around communities soliciting their like asking questions and i also opted to do to ask my question live so one thing i realized is, is that it's a mindset game it's something that like is in your mind if you can do it you can do it right but what has helped me is looking at where i'm coming from and looking at where I want to get to. So before I take the stage, I keep reminding me of who I am and what public speaking has given me in terms of opportunities, in terms of leverage, in terms of like the number of people I've been able to connect to, and also equally, the voice I've been able to give to society, like in terms of mentoring people to speak, and they are now doing great things. So I look at all these things and that overrides my fear or nervousness. So if my body is not even giving me the right attention or the necessary uh, feedback, I still go ahead to do it because the force that's keeping me or making me speak is more than the fear. So you need to like, I just need to go up and speak. But then you may mention one or two things and they also count. And... Uh, Research about your audience, know who your audience are. Sometimes go early to the speaking uh, auditorium or where you want to speak, interact with the audience before your presentation. It will help decrease the tension. If there's tension, it's going to make you relax. But what has really helped me more is just knowing why I speak and also learning one or two techniques from great speakers and then practicing. So for the past, uh, I think, 10 years, now I don't do it like most often. I don't do it like I used to, but I used to practice consistently for five good years, every, every day, one hour of practice. So I'll just go somewhere, and I had my head, have my headset, or like just not even, if there's no headset at our school, I'll go somewhere where people are preaching, you know, nights, People are doing uh, devotions, they are praying and making noise. So I also go there and just walk around, walking around, doing my rehearsals, practicing, speaking, like sometimes even I would say tons. But I just speak, I just find something to say, right? And I've been doing that consistently for t uh, close to like eight good years. The past two years, I've not been consistent. So practice has given me the leverage to know that, yes, I've been practicing. So if I'm practicing, what am I practicing for? To speak. So whenever there's nerves, I try to calm myself down. And also deep breaths. I breathe, take some breaths, and try to get, in, get into the game. So this many can actually help you to uh, win the game of public speaking. But the essential one is practicing. Practicing. And practicing knowing your audience, understanding your audience, and uh, taking the stage and believing in whatever you do. So you are into like zip line. And now people, if you are going to talk about zip line, if you are going to uh, talk about zip line, you are comfortable. You are great. You will be able to talk about zip line without any excuse because you know the operations of zip line. So you need to know about what you are talking about. All right? Some people, like for example, if I'm not a health personnel, and you say, okay, Ibrahim, come and speak about health. You see that I'll be like this step. I have to do researches to know what is in the system before I come out and speak. If you come and speak about public speaking, 
I just know the formula. I know what to talk about. The basic questions I will ask you are, one, who are your audience? What is the intention of this particular presentation? And what do you want to achieve out of this presentation? Those three questions can help me prepare any presentation. So you need to know all these things. So there are a lot of them, but then these are just the basic ingredients. Practice. Do your audience analysis well? Go, 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 go to the stage. Track of your audience. Look at their smiles. Look at their the way they think. Like get into their minds and prepare questions. Prepare questions that they are possibly going to ask you. Prepare them before your speech. And once you get there, you are not afraid because I've seen some of my students who say that, eh, what if they ask me questions and I don't know the questions and they disgrace me? And that's the fear. So go get into the, uh, the minds of your audience. Ask yourself questions that they may ask you. And uh, well, thus, I'm telling you, you can become a world-class speaker without fear. But then nervousness will still come. Uh, hope, uh, it, hope it's helpful. Adam. Yeah, very, very uh, helpful. Um, maybe one more question uh, from me. Um, so I also know one um, positive attribute of uh, good speakers is your ability to be able to tell stories um, right. in your presentations. I mean, right. I know... ...around this, you know... We uh, love being... you for some 30 seconds. Oh, sorry. So uh, my question was around, um, you know, speaking and using the tool of uh, storytelling. Um, right. I'm saying that for people, for some people, they are very good speakers, but they lack the ability to be able to tell stories or link uh, their storytelling ability with the substance that they are presenting to their audience. Um, what works for you, if you would like to share? Uh, about storytelling... I said yesterday we did a bit of storytelling and uh, it's it's what works what has worked actually for me is the power of like going back to what I actually said uh, we lost we lost him I think he'll be ca uh, coming back very soon uh, today I don't know yesterday and today the network seems to be getting out of hand so welcome, Madam Zakaria. Welcome, Marsh. Thank you. Abdul. OK, Abdul, welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, can you rephrase your question again? Because like it's like I was having difficulty hearing the entire question. Okay, so I was saying that um, I have learned that uh, one of the attributes for good speakers um, is the fact that you need to employ the tool of storytelling. Yes. Abdul? So I think we've lost Abdul again. Uh, uh, we, we can't hear you. We can't actually hear you. Oh, Enoch, welcome. Um, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yeah, so I was just asking, um, you know, how do you employ the tool of storytelling into your public speaking? right so yesterday we did a bit of that and uh i have like a framework and uh and that's the framework i used to tell like let's my audience or my students appreciate uh, just going to show the slides i don't know whether i still have it so, so right so this is the framework i kind of follow the six pointers and uh, one more one is that I show the story. I don't just tell the story. I let the people know that I give them an experience to let them know that, yes, the story is real. 
and I show it. Let them see it. So in your in the audience mind, you need to let them see the story. Let them see it. Like let them feel the story. Don't just feel like oh you are telling it just like you are not even present. You don't even know what the story is about. But then you can just be immense yourself in the story. Number two is you need to be yourself. If it goes on well, fine. All you can control is you, right? And uh, telling the audience what you feel about whatever you want to tell them. And number three is you always need to rehearse your story. Most of the times we go on stage and stories come up. Yes, stories can just come up. I can be saying something now and the story will come up and I'm going to tell that story. But then I've rehearsed that story several times. So you need to rehearse your stories. So if I'm going to do leadership, I look at possibly stories that relate to leadership that I've gone through. And I rehearse them. Okay, I'm going to tell the story this way. And next time, if I tell it this way and it's not going on well, next time I'm going to change the narrative. So you need to rehearse and practice your story. Number four is you need to don't miss your characters, right? And this is like purposeful. Number five is there should be a purpose for the story. The story should in a way relate to whatever you are like supposed to deal with. It should make your work easy. And number six is your story must have a moral. So this is kind of like the the framework I go through. Anytime I'm telling stories, I ask myself, what is the moral of the story? What am I going to achieve? What am I always going to achieve out of the story? And I kind of like say it. So, and storytelling goes beyond just like fictional stories. Storytelling has to do with, we, we are all good storytellers or bad storytellers. The introduction you made, talking about you and working with Zipline, being a nurse, it's all like story. It's, it's your personal story that you are telling, right? It can be fictional and non-fictional, but then it's all come, it all comes to storytelling. So your introductions is storytelling. Whatever I'm doing now, I'm telling stories. So I just kind of like immerse in that, appreciating that. If I'm going to be a good speaker, I need to learn to tell stories. I need to learn to capture my audience attention. I need to learn to be able to create like an illusion in the audience minds and tell them what I want to tell them so that they can accept it. So that's kind of like things that work for me and they may actually work for you but then learn to know how to tell your own stories and learn to own your own stories. If it's your personal stories, let the audience know. This has happened to me and I'm going to share it. I can pick your story, I can pick the story of Mash and say that, okay, Mash is an accountant and uh, he's into ABCD. That's his story and I can use that. We are in Ghana, I can pick one of the spy story. There are a lot of people pick that. I can pick my Zuckerberg story and tell it, but I need to know the synopsis of it. Microsoft, I can tell his story, Bill Gates, right? But the story must have a moral, and the moral could be drop out from Harvard. At the end of the day, letting people know how they can start small and uh, go like, so there are different twists to storytelling. And that's the kind of like formula I use. Hope that helps much, uh, Abdul. Today we have, uh, okay, so sorry uh, if I'm not able to bring you up. There are some people, first time, and the difficulty in connectivity is making it difficult for me to bring some people up. Enoch, welcome. Adam Zakaria, uh, welcome Enoch. Mash. Can you hear me? Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. Ibrahim. Great, great. Which one? The network is not favoring, right? So I think someone should call Esla Wusu and uh, we'll draw the complaint. Right. I am good evening. Uh, Richmond. Good evening. How are you? By God's grace, I'm fine. Please and you. That's I'm doing great by grace. Just that one or two things. I went out to the walk and uh, I nearly got my phone snatched. 
Oh. Right. Sorry about so, that. Right. Yeah, like uh, there should be like uh, there's nothing to be sorry about, but it's all. Like, what I just want to emphasize here is that we should all take our personal security serious. And uh, if we take it serious, it might help us because there are people who just want to take advantage of you, and they don't care whether they die or not. Like I was feeling sorry for them because if they were caught, like you know, that's the end of their life. That would have been the end. So we need to, in a way, uh, let people uh, appreciate that, yes, life is like a continuous thing. You don't try to cut corners, like be snatching people's phones, like as, as early as uh, 7.30. You can't do that and get away with it. So I'm happy I was able to grab my phone, only that I... I some of uh, this, I lo some cracks and uh, my just yes, this one had to the cover fell down the phone also fell but it was there, there's a screen protector to it so let's move on and let's do what we do best so uh, I keep on re losing Richmond Richmond I think it's time you get an MTN table net. Even with that, we are not safe. So, Marsh, today do you have something to say? Before we go to the main thing that we want to talk about. Hello? Something? Yes, like... I can hear. If you have a question, if you have something that like, you want to present on... You are talking about storytelling. Right. But it's like yesterday, I missed. I didn't get the first part. Right. So, like, the first part was just initial to let you know that if you are a good storyteller, you can market your products and services. If you're a good storyteller, okay. people will buy from you. You can create opportunities. You can even go to the stage and speak and people will cry just because you're a good storyteller. So storytelling is like, it's the integral part of public speaking. Apart from uh, practicing, storytelling is one of the best ways that you can get your audience and find your voice on stage. So a lot of people, you see that there are people who, are, who always keep speaking. Whether they are ministers, whether they are like pastors, whether they are lecturers, they, they've been speaking, like they've been sharing the stage for like five years or 10 years they've been speaking, but they don't make impact in other people's lives. They always have TV, they are there. When you turn your TV on, they are there, right? But they're not making any impact just because they don't know how to tell good stories. They don't know how to package the stories to change someone's mind. So that was just about the first part. And I can remember some time ago, I had the opportunity to uh, coach a pastor, like about public speaking. And this is like a man who is in his 60, 60, 65 years. And he has been doing uh, the work of God. Like he has been a pastor for the past like 15 years. So, but he's one of his uh, sons who is like a kind of like a friend booked the session coaching session for the father he said oh my father needs it i said but he's been speaking so when i confronted the father like we had one like a meeting before the actual coaching and this was this one this man was like i've been doing this for the past 15 years i've been speaking what do i need public speaking for and at a point i really agreed with him i said you need to. It's like a software. You need to upgrade. If you have like iPhone, you need to upgrade it. <laughs> Yesterday they sent me upgrades and telling me that I, I need to upgrade. If I'm going to sleep or later uh, midnight, I should put it on power so that they can upgrade it. Right? Update it rather. So life is like that. So I explained a lot of things and he said, okay, let's go on. 
to the first session, because he was already speaking, he has the confidence to go on stage, he has been speaking, meeting different people. I said, I wanted to talk to him about storytelling, how he can be able to share stories, to ca capture people's minds, how he can be able to use the storytelling. Maybe he's been telling stories, but let's see how he tells different stories to be able to get, to get different audience. And he said, at the end of the session, this man was like, wow, he's been missing a lot. Because what he is, like, he, he tells them plain, right? Not even going into the emotions of people, but he just like, but now he's a changed man because he can tell good stories. And these stories can attract both religious like, perspectives, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. You can be able to follow whatever he's saying. And, uh, and that's powerful because there are people I follow who are Christians. I, I listen to them. I like to listen to them like Joel Austin. I like Mr. Otabel. I listen to him. I listen to T.D. Jakes. But I'm a Muslim. Right. Why? Because they tell good stories. They inspire people. You don't care whether, like, these people, you don't need to be a Muslim or Christian to listen to them. They inspire you to do things. So as a uh, person, you need to learn to tell good stories. So, Mash, in, in summary, and that's how I can sum it up, telling good stories can help you. Whether you're an accountant, whether you're a lawyer, you can win your cases if you learn to tell good stories. And classical cases, uh, Johnny Depp and Amber. Uh, each one is saying, I'm using storytelling to explain storytelling. Yes. Right. So you need to like look at that classically. When they, they, were fini they, they finished the case and the lawyers had to come up on stage and uh, speak, you realize that they use the power of storytelling and the lady was like emotional and that was what i was talking about yesterday she used the power of emotions to capture the audience the judge's mind telling good stories and at a point you feel like sharing tears because she was touching on sensitive issues but then making them very like uh, simple so that you can be able to follow so storytelling is just about how you can create opportunities especially pitching you need to learn to pitch when you are going to pitch you need to use storytelling to pitch so balong welcome balong uh yesterday balong was absent maybe we'll ask him what, where he went to and what he was doing so welcome to all of you welcome to uh this session today and uh because i'm speaking mash is down i didn't see that so, Balon, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim, and to all the guys who are, who are with us via your, uh, your site. Yesterday, I, I was tired after a hard day work. I came and I slept right. off. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so, that's great. Uh, welcome. And uh, just did it with it. Richmond, cool. after. I am. Yes. Please, you said you were practicing over the years, and I would like to ask, how were you practicing? Were you practicing uh, the prepared speech, or how, how do you practice? I was just speaking. So, I will go. What, what I usually do is that I'll prepare speeches in my mind. And that was why what I was doing with you when we started this particular uh, sessions. I will prepare speeches, like uh, dummy speeches. So, for example, I will tell myself, okay, if I, if I want to go and talk about leadership, what am I going to do? What am I go how am I going to say that? Like, so if I'm going to do speaking trainings, then I will just put things in my mind, start using that, just start practicing. So I have my earpiece here. Sorry, I just want to st uh, stand up a little. Mm -hmm. and get back. So if I have, I have this, you can see. So if I don't want noise, I put it, I will not listen to anybody. I can't, I wanna hear anybody speaking. 
and I'll just connect this and ready, I'm going. I'm going to start speaking. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa and I just keep talking, keep talking. So I can just prepare a speech. For example, I'm going to do a like two minutes pr uh, pr uh, practice for you to see. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa. And today I'm here to let you appreciate that no matter who you are, no matter what you do, you can make it in life. Things may not be as you expect them to be, but just keep showing up and keep doing what you do. It may be tough, it may be hard, but you can make it possible. So don't give up on yourself, don't give up on your dreams, because there are people who are waiting to see you win. There are people who, when you win, they will also win because they believe in you. So no matter who you are, and forget about the background, forget about where you're coming from, forget about your educational qualification, because you can make a difference. Starting from here, starting from now, you can start and make a difference in someone's life. So never give up in life, just keep pushing, keep showing up, and don't stop until you make it. So just like a mini demo presentation, but then I can do this for like, Two hours. I can just be speaking like that for two good hours without stopping. So, and that has helped me. And it's a way to practice. It's a way to practice. Right. So you can do practice like that. Just practice like that. And you are good to go. Welcome, Suhini. Thank you. Right. So, Suhini, uh, oh. before we kick start any serious thing uh i just want to put you in a lamb light hope you are ready your presentation yes, right I'm so Suina has a presentation for us for us to all look at and uh so just be on the standby and let's hear from our one and only suhini uh, i'm just gonna share my screen Price. Is it that, that's the job search strategies, right? Yes, please. Great, great. So this is it. So when you are ready, let me know. Okay. Should we go ahead? Yes. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Suhini Suleiman Asedu. Today, we are going to do a presentation on um, job set strategies. Well, job set strategies, as you all know, they are means by which we can find jobs. There are no vacancies. There are limited job, job opportunities. But, but then, trust me, there are vacancies in companies in which when we apply this. Today, we'll be talk talking about a quick glance on profit professional CV format, how to find jobs online and in your locality. We we'll also talk about career resources. Please let's move to the next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask a question. What to pursue a degree?
Nini, can you hear me? Right. So I think uh, we are having challenges with the uh, network today. So I think we'll do the presentation next, tomorrow, because uh, this thing is not favoring all of us. So let's move on. Balam, today what do you have for us? Uh, for today, I, I'm not prepared, but yeah, I missed the previous days. So I just thought, let me, let me join and catch up with the team. Right, right. So we just talked about public uh, presentation, uh, power of practice, and uh, you also storytelling. Storytelling techniques. So today I want to move a little further and do a little conversation about how to pitch your ideas. And this is important because you need to learn to pitch your ideas. You need to learn to let people appreciate that, yes, you have ideas and you can pitch them. Right. So, uh, maybe if, if someone having an idea here that they want to start with pitch to us, Suini, yes, I think we lost we lost a bit of like connections, and because of the network, it's difficult to even read the slide. So we'll do your presentation tomorrow, right? Yes, please. If that's okay. So that yes, I believe please. that tomorrow there we should have a better connection. Yesterday it was the same. Maybe today because Balon is here, she, <laughs> she may, uh, he may he may tell uh, uh, Esla so that they will give us more connectivity. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. That's right. So, so if someone is having an idea. Is someone say something? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next. If you can go over the pitch template. Okay. okay. So I'll go over the pitch template, but because of the connectivity, I'm still afraid. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm coming, but let me see okay. whether I can still go through it. And I, I promised to share the peace template with all of you, but I don't know why. Uh -huh. Yesterday, yes. Yes, I promise. And I'll still do it. So this is the peace template. I don't know because of the slow nature of the internet. And uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not clear. But you can see it. It's not clear. So let me see how I can make it clear. I can't see where. So, but there are elements that you need to know when you are pitching. Okay. Yes. And let me say that yesterday was better than today. I don't know why. Like, when it's just time for this program, and I check internet connectivity, I start. Hello? Hello. Marsh? Yes. Sibley? Yes, yes. You have something to say? Yes, I want to pitch. I, will, I, I have a perfect uh, pitch. I want to try and see if I can uh, present it. Okay. You can pitch it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should I share the slide or... Uh, today, I think slides are not working that much. Okay, 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 no problem. Let, because, let, because him let, him, let him try and we see. Marsh, you also try. You also try. <laughs> you also... <laughs> right, so, and that's the beauty of it. We're now a family now. So, let's go straight. I'm going to share, like, one or, the, one or two things that you need to do when you are pitching. Then after that, mm -hmm. uh, you go ahead of the pitch, right? So, so the first thing you need to look at when you are pitching is what problem are you solving? Okay. About what problem are you solving, and why is a big? Why is it a big problem? Because it may be a problem, but not a big problem. 
Number yeah. two, what is your solution? If, yeah, if you say what problem are you solved, like example. Okay. You have to build. if <laughs> Mash, Mash is trying to become yeah. opposition leader here. <laughs> opposition leader Mark. Mash. So <laughs> so for example, you may your problem may be that for uh, there's no light in your community. Okay. Okay. That, that may be a problem. Or, the, uh, or if okay. I'm even going to use yes. this case as an example, internet connectivity is not strong. It's not strong. Okay. Right. And that may be a problem. Okay. So, wh why is it a big problem? Then I will say it's a big problem because I want to do programs outside Ghana. I want to speak to, like, I want to connect Zoom and do international Zoom, programs, yeah. but I cannot connect. And the network is not. Mm -hmm. So I think we lost the same thing. Okay. Then what is your solution? Why is your solution okay. unique? What is your background? And who are you, your team members? What are your strategies and what is what do you want in terms of uh, funding? And what's the need for the investor? So it's, it's, these are like basic questions that you need to answer. So Balon, go ahead. Oh, okay. And okay. tomorrow, tomorrow you show, you, tomorrow we'll give you the chance because it will be better. Uh, uh, so you know, we'll do his uh, presentation tomorrow. And you also do your presentation also. So, but like, just go ahead and tell us, pitch to us. Let's see. Yeah, I tried that. Welcome, I'm uploading it. It doesn't work. Here. So, okay. I tried uploading it, but I, like, I'm lost. Uh, look, is that still why we are saying the uh, templates will not work today? Okay, so I can start from anywhere. Yeah, you can just start from anywhere. Okay. Um. Okay, let me see this way. Is it there? Which one? I just share with you. I'm saying that because of the connectivity, you, you will not get to see it well. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So. Um. Good evening, uh, judges. Thanks for a day of, like this nature. I'm Balon Sibri, um, the founder of Yafela Farms. We are located in the Upper East region, precisely Boko. It is undeniable that Ghana imports about 180,000 metric tons of poultry meat annually. Fortunately, most hotels and restaurants prefer domestic red and processed uh, chicken due to differences uh it has from the imported ones the network is breaking, network is keep breaking. On, keep on. Oh, okay okay from the domestic poultry our venture is to augment the huge importation of poultry and poultry products into the country because there's an increasing demand of over forty thousand metric tons of poultry per annum against the decline in domestic commercial poultry meat production of about 57.8 metric tons. Yerefela Farms is a commercially is a, is a commercial uh, poultry processing venture. We exist for, all, uh, for five years now. Am I on? Yes, you are on. Our problem there is an unavailability of avian poultry processing companies. We have discovered that in Ghana, there's a um, limited number of poultry processing companies, especially in the north and precisely in the Upper East region of Ghana. This creates chronic and increased importation of frozen chicken into, the, into, the, in, into Ghana. And also frozen, uh, Chicken retailers undergoes a series of headaches and frustrations importing chicken all the way from Accra to Upper East Region and precisely to Bogotá, which is about a thousand kilometer journey. 
That notwithstanding, small to medium poultry farmers struggle to sell their poultry. We only make sales on market days and on festive season. That's our market problem. So the solution we have is at uh, Yafala Farms, we aim to establish an avian processing company that will process commercial, uh, that will process poultry on a commercial basis. And in our processing, we are looking at matured bears, which we weigh and package. We also plan to sell the, uh, the litter from the poultry to crop or uh, farmers. And we have a scalability uh, that is we plan to gradually introduce poultry hatchery and then fully automated poultry processing, feed milling, and then establish cold stores at advantage points within the country. And we are starting from the Upper East region. Our unique value proposition we aim at is to readily, to readily, to provide, uh, to make uh, poultry available at the doorstep of our uh, customers. We also rely on locally red and processed. Our products are organically raised. They are non-preservatives. Our hallmark is to meet the demand of uh, our customers all year round. Our unique advantage we see is to deliver our product at the doorstep of customers with flexible payment terms. You can either reach us through the mobile money. You can pay us on cash. You can either use, um, uh, you can pay us through our bank accounts. We are always at the service of our customers. You have no wahala. You just need to call us and we'll deliver. We deliver our products timely at the doorstep of our customers with requested specifications. You can either look for, you can either order for live best. You can order for fresh, fresh uh, process, frozen, smoke, or steamed. Our market um, site we are looking at, we are looking at uh, two main domains. That is uh, the informal sector and the formal sector, both comprises of individuals, supermarkets, restaurants, hotels, households within the Upper East region, Northern region, and Ghana as a whole. Yeah, and our marketing strategy entails, uh, we want to use word of mouth. We also rely on local radio stations. You can also reach us through our website. We also rely on our social media handles. Then there's also an online system of ordering. You can order for, uh, from our, uh, our website. Yeah. Um, And what we have to, uh, our revenue is mostly from the sales of the uh, our poultry and poultry products. That is either X or the old checks. We want to introduce that one too as time goes on. We can also get uh, the poultry dropping to we are ready to uh, sell that one as time goes on as well. So in the nutshell, at the Yafela Farms, we are we have recognized the greatest opportunity we can ever had in Africa. That is the importation of poultry and poultry products. We've realized this due to the challenges we've observed importing poultry from the south to the north, and also we, the local farmers, are unable to sell our products. So we've seen it a necessity to establish a processing company within the Upper East region where we can process the locally raised poultry. Uh, other farmers too, we can buy from theirs and sell as well. So in the nutshell, we are here looking for Slightly above 50,000 Ghana CD that will help us as a starter to go into full poultry processing. We need at least 30, um, let's say 100,000 Ghana CD. Therefore, as a startup, we are looking at just 50,000 Ghana CD so that we can start up as we progress along. We can raise in, uh, internal generations, we can have internal generation within ourselves where we can uh, then progress our, uh, our venture. Uh, I think I will land it here, Mr. Ryan. Thank you very much. Judges, do you have questions for him? And please, don't, don't be afraid to ask any question. Just ask any question. Whether he likes it or not, he must take it like that. Okay. Right. Then we'll like, because once you get into the realm of uh, pitching, 
you ask you questions that you yourself should be fed up. So, any question, Marsh? AJ? Yes. Right. Uh -huh. She's showing his face. Hello? If you ask the wrong questions, <laughs> you'll get beaten. Okay. So, Marsh? Uh -huh. The network is messing up. Go ahead, Marsh. I wanted to know the aims of the, the aims of the company aims and objectives hello yes yes please i said i wanted to know the Our aims of aim. the company Okay, per our uh, write-up, we have uh, to meet and exceed the customer's expectation by providing high-quality uh, services and products. And also, we okay. also uh, want to make sure that uh, our, our customers are able to feed on locally raised and locally rare, locally processed poultry. So that instead of, uh, aren't, Ms. Marge, aren't you tired of uh, the imported frozen chicken that is commonly called a cocoa foods? You have the right to <laughs> take originally made, locally raised, organically made. So I think you should join us in our venture. Okay, you are you are you are you are you are right. <laughs> we need right. to we, <laughs> we need to consume locally. Meat. Yes. In sort of yes. important. Right. So uh Do you have questions, Richmond? Yeah, um, I, have, I have a few comments um, to make. Okay. Can I go ahead? Yes, you can. Yeah, so um, I think um, he did well, but um, I realized that he wasn't very confident with what he was saying. Um, so this one, he's trying to convince people to, you know, patronize his product, but... He wasn't. He appeared not to be very confident with uh, whatever he was saying. So, um, I have learned that once you are not very confident, or once your audience feel you are not very confident of what you are saying, there is a very higher chance that they would not. Um, they are not convinced, so they wouldn't even, um, you know, patronize whatever product that you are, you know, are selling out to them. So, um, I would suggest that. He, he spent some more time like trying to um, master the the information. Um, it looked like he was literally like le reading from a script that is prepared. And I followed uh, you um, some time ago and you mentioned that as much as possible, try to avoid, you know, uh, staying verbatim onto, onto the script. Yeah. All right. So... I don't know. Um, that's from Abdul, right? Abdul. Yes. That okay. That's from Abdul. So thank you for the feedback. Yes. And uh, yeah. So. Uh, right. Right. So. If you still have questions, bring them, AJ. And and I want you to, this is what I want you to do. We are not just here to like, like ourselves. No, this is a whole different program altogether for you to give like the type of feedback that will help that person. I get me. So I like what he, he's saying. Right, based on his observations. So we all have our observations. And I like that, like, if you are giving feedback, just give it, like, how it is. And that is, like, when you go to pitching, that's just how they give you. I remember and the, the last time I pitched, <laughs> I nearly had a problem with uh, one South African judge, lady. It was, it was this engine program, and I was... To pitch, I still have like 1,500 uh, pounds with them. So when it was time for me to pitch, 
I started about whatever I wanted to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this lady, <laughs> when I finished, she asked the first question she asked me is that, and she was like, they brought her from South Africa, all from South Africa to judge this particular competition. So she asked me that, ah, it's like in Ghana, the graduates in Ghana are not that, uh, like, we don't have a lot of graduates who can speak good English. So if I do this call center, <laughs> I wanted to do a call center. Where will I get graduates who can speak good English to do it? So, <laughs> and that was a hot question for me. In reply, I just said, uh, for my research, the graduates in Ghana can speak better English than those in South Africa. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, and uh, the CEO, uh, the person who was in charge of the whole program was like, hey, like, and the other Ghanaian judges were also like on her, like they were just supporting her. Come and see, they were asking me questions I couldn't answer. Right, they were just throwing <laughs> questions up and down because they were annoying. <laughs> I just did my best <laughs> and I left the stage. So like, so judging or pitching is one of the hardest things. When you get on stage and you are pitching, they can ask you a question or you feel like going to box the other person. But then they are asking you real <laughs> questions because you are going into business. And I think that was the last time I pitched seriously and I just got like emotional. I got emotional because of that question. But then after that, and uh, about that time, I wasn't even doing public speaking. I was just a hustler somewhere, some just trying to hustle and get things out. But now I understand one or two things about uh, some of the things that you do. Um, when you are pr pr uh, presenting, you should be able to like, expect any question at all and you take it in good fit and at the end of the day they still gave me the award tie two award of 1500 pounds i didn't go for it it was with them uh, like until the program finished so <laughs> <laughs> this is time for feedback so questions or if you have a pitch also we'll do it and tomorrow i think tomorrow you still do that pitch Okay. Right, you still yeah. do it, and uh, if you also have a pitch around here, you can uh, bring it up and do it after. Uh, so tomorrow the order is going to be Suhini is going to do his uh, 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 presentation. The next you do your pitch, and if anyone also has a pitch, you come and practice it, and we tell you give you feedback. But quickly, okay. two things you need to take into consideration is that. Based on the type of pitch you are doing, you can always summarize the things that you are going to do. And uh, uh, there's a program I, I would suggest you all go and watch, which is Dragons Den or Shark Tanks. Shark Tanks, okay. So yeah. Shark Tanks or Dragons Den. So Dragon, I like like I, I I'm a fan of Dragons Den more than Shark Tanks. I like because I watch like a lot of those series. And you see that they give like direct, it's just like Shark Tank. They give you, give it to you. They just like, and within two minutes, you should be done with your pitch. Sometimes even one minute. And it's, the pitch is going to be like, oh, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I want to set up a poultry farm uh, in Boku. And the purpose is that I want to promote made in Ghana. My access, if you're an investor, valuation is two million. You want 100,000 to start. It will give you like 2% or 10% of shares. That's all. And the question will keep coming. Questions will keep coming. Like, okay, what was your sales? Right? What is your background? And how do you like, you tell a sales history. So sometimes you even need your accountant or someone who is into like figures. If not, they will ask you questions, you want to vanish. So as a rule of thumb, watch those pitches and see how they will ask you tough questions. They ask people tough questions and they overcome. So quickly, you can look at those and it will inform you and you can pick any idea, present on them. And once you are presenting on them, I'm telling you, you are going to get better and get better and get better. 
a lot of people don't know how to pitch. NGOs now don't make money from like, unless some donor somewhere who just like, they just want to do a project. Most of the NGOs in Ghana, they don't get funded as compared to NGOs in Kenya. They are smart, right? And NGOs in Nigeria, they, they, they just invest in funding, uh, pitching. It's a whole thing people invest in just to be able to get the attention of donors, right? So you need to take it serious because it can help you and any organization that you work into and you want to train them about pitching, especially pitching, they are going to open their doors for you. Because if you do it well, you make money. You'll be able to sell your ideas. You can market your products, your brands, and whatever you do. But make it short and go and let them know that, yes, you know uh, what you are talking about. So own it. Own it. Own it. The question uh, Mash asked, and you said, what is written here is uh, no. So tomorrow you are going to come back strong and do it. Uh, questions again, or if you have some, some feedback, or if you have questions to ask, where it is the time. AJ, welcome. Thank you. Okay. So what do you have for us today? I don't have much to say. Okay. So reintroduce yourself and I will move on. Okay. My name is Abdel Gaffar, a, a business consultant and a CV writer at AG Professional Services. Great. So, uh, Mash, you did your introduction I to be agree, right? Richmond, go on. Yes. Yeah, please, I would like to ask if he has competitors. Uh, so, Sibri, who oh. are your competitors? Yeah, our competitors are basically uh, imported frozen chicken. Those import frozen chicken from outside, uh, the outside, uh, from outside. Okay. Which one? Sell other meat aside chicken. All they right. also deal with like, for instance, also our competitors in the market. Which one? Yeah, I didn't get the last part, please. I spoke of uh, importers, frozen chicken importers, and uh, beef sellers, those who sell beef, chevron, those who deal with tilapia. Okay. okay. Uh, um, yeah, I also have another question for Osibiri. Okay. Yeah, so um, one major challenge that I see with regards to uh, poultry business or the protein industry is got to do with like diseases of animals in general. So currently even humans, we are facing communicable diseases and so on. And it's the same for um, animals. Um, what measures are you putting in place to be able to um, absorb a possible uh, outbreak okay. in communicable diseases? Yes, thank you for your question. You asked, what are the measures we put in place to overcome diseases? Yes, diseases or the outbreak, it is a norm in poultry rearing because it's, they communi uh, they communi uh, how they got infected is easier. It's either through water, or through feed, or through their feces, or through that. Yes, we do have those challenges. That notwithstanding, we uh, do implement primitive measures such as, um, before you even enter the poultry uh, farm, there's a, um, a barrier, a water.
that is PPEs, the PPEs, and we follow pragmatically the treatment guidelines that are given. We also go into consultation with the local veterinary service uh, uh, office within uh, within uh, the Boko. Then. Right. Let's work challenges. So I think we can't hear you now, Sibri. We can't hear. So, uh, get us up well. The network is okay. So, what tomorrow we'll do is that, like, I have also my questions that I've put in together. And uh, at the end of the month, what I'm hoping to do on this particular program is not just to, of the pitching. I want to encourage more people to pitch because it's also another way to get you speaking. So, at the end of the month, we are going to be having a contest here. We lost, we lost, we keep on losing. Okay, he's back. Yeah, I'm back. So, are um, okay. So maybe you can just wrap up and uh, we'll move on. Yes, yeah, so I was saying that we have a vet guy who is also part of our team. He's there 24 hours. Then we've trained our uh, caretakers to observe the poultry, uh, and they know the behavior. They want to have the funny behavior. We observe the feces, their uh, status, or the way they uh, react to each other. Then we could segregate those ones. Then we put on the, the other measures to curtail any further outbreak. Precisely that's what we do. I don't know. If you have anything you can add to us, we are, it's welcome. You mean we isolate right. them? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, I think to add, um, what you can also do is to be able to. Um, like bringing breeds that can resist mm. these communicable diseases, right? Mm. I think that is okay. a most cheaper way to go around this. I mean, all the steps that you have mentioned, like isolating, observing, immunizing, you know, they are very expensive to do. At the end of the day, you end up spending all your money in just trying to prevent or treat communicable diseases. So I think okay. an idea is to bring in, you know, disease resistant yeah. breeds to be able to stand the local, um, I mean, the very common diseases that we have for uh, poultry. I think um, that's what I can suggest. All right, thank you. Well noted. When you, when you have nurses going into poultry, and uh, because they are all <laughs> nurses, right? Uh, Abdul is a nurse, right? Yeah, I am. I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to say, Ness. So if you are here, you're not starting a business. You are behind you. The nurses <laughs> are doing wonderful things. And uh, Abdul is a uh, works of zip line too. So maybe we can fly your. Uh, and they do great so, things. Yeah. So actually, at zip line, um, we have a program we are mounting with um, another organization. Uh, called Cow Tribe. So I right. think after this call, I'll be grateful to speak with uh, Sibri uh, as a conduit to get to the poultry farmers in Upper East. We actually want to be able to fly vaccines to poultry farmers in the Upper East uh, uh, region. This is something that we are heavily working on with Cow Tribe. Yeah. Okay, that's Great. fine. Great. So, and uh, there's beauty in collaborations and you should and you see, there should be synergy in whatever you do. And speaking will give you the opportunity to work with different people. Speaking will like open doors for you. And the guy you just mentioned about Cow Tribe, uh, we've worked together, Peter, and great guy, great guy. And they have a strategy, like great strategy when it comes to pitching. Alima always goes to pitch. Because Alima Bauer can 
like pitch very well. So she's in the pitching front, right? So you need to like have a system to know how to pitch and to know how to be able to like the type of language you even use. Like you go the emotional way and sometimes you go there like statistical way. You can go the start, but make sure it's short. Like it's short. Make sure it's like it's something that is catchy. What is your ax? What is it for the uh, people that you are pitching to? And how is your business going to make a difference? So tomorrow, we are going to do more about pitching. And my dream is that at the end of the day, we should be able to uh, give something out to society. I'm going to organize a pitch sessions. And I think I wanted to do that first before even the public speaking coaching. Where by the end of the day, at the end of the week or month, we will organize like a one pitching session whereby everybody comes to pitch his or her, her idea. And we have experienced people, people will just pick as judges, will choose. And one, it helps them to learn how to pitch. And two, we'll just put in uh, something small and give it to them and give it to whoever wins in the, at the end of the week or the month. So we just give something out so that people will be able to like know that, yes, pitching is very important. I go to events in Ghana and outside Ghana. And one of my colleagues, so, some people who I trust are believing when they are pitching, they just think like it's something that is casual and they don't put in their best. They don't put in their strategies, right? But as, elsewhere, I see like, excuse me to say this, if you are from Nigeria, sorry to say this. I've gone to events of international events of Nigerians and then have a way of pitching. I'm telling you, which is like they, they have people who know how to pitch. So maybe if I'm Ibrahim Mustafa, I don't, I don't know how to pitch. I'll collaborate with Sibiri or Abdul and he will be doing their pitching. So they, they don't lose at all. They'll give you all the pitch, the nice words to be able to like let you win or uh, just get the winning formula in terms of pitching. So pitching is also another way that you can even use pitching. And I've, I have people who are mentored outside Ghana, and they are only doing pitching as their business, as public speaking. They just pitch. So there are coaches who will help people to pitch, and they are making a living out of that. Uh, Richmond. Richmond. I am. Yes, the questions have not started. So don't be afraid and say you will not pitch your idea again. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pitch, please. Okay, let's go. That's not today, I am. Ah. <laughs> Everybody is afraid. So we are saying that's not today. Okay, so we are going to do uh, dummy pitches. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to bring up business ideas on the spot. You pitch. Richmond. I only had I. The M did not come. On. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I can pick anybody. So you see, what I'm trying to let you appreciate is that the fear factor. I'm putting you in the fear factor, right? Where you just sit down and you don't know. So when you go to events, it's going to happen to you as speakers. When you don't know the time you are going to speak, and they just say, okay, Sibri, it's your time. That waiting period, I'm telling you, if you don't take time, you go to the washroom like three or four times. <laughs> yeah, they put you in suspense. And I can remember it was an international event. And uh, normally when you go to international events, like big, big stages, they put you at the back, right? We call it dark room or people say green room or whatever. But like, I know it to be dark room. And once this is your time, you just go there. If you are going to change, you are allowed to change to go to the washroom without distracting the audience. Then you come out. So we're three speakers. 
the first man they wanted to uh, call was like 65 years experienced man so when it was like they started introducing him like two <laughs> minutes for him to come on stage he started doing press up hand pressing <laughs> <laughs> oh man, come and see. So I was like, ah, this fight man, are you serious? So he started doing press up. He did like 10, got up, did 10, then he pumped up and he went. Uh, so after that, I was a second and I just went and did my presentation and the last person also went. So I asked him, oh, what was the essence of that? And he said he wanted to get the blood moving. He wanted to be in action mode. <laughs> <laughs> that was why he did that. Like, and so you need to find whatever makes you happy when you are going on stage. Sometimes, like we talk about nervousness, it's a, it's, a, it's a natural phenomenon. It's going to come, but then put yourself in the element. Some people mm -hmm. can listen to songs; they can just have like so they are about to speak, but you hear them. You are just they are just singing along. They are listening to something they like. Are just watching something they like on their phone, or they are calling someone they love, or they are doing press up just like to keep their body warm and activities going. And that's how some people get over their nerves, especially when the stage is big. But if you are the type of the old man, you can do press up. <laughs> do hand press up. <laughs> like, right. That was my first time of seeing an old man like that doing hand pressing, serious hand pressing. But then he wants to put himself into that element. That's his business. So you need to just get in and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Most people will be afraid to make mistakes. So Richmond, I've, uh, I've, I will send you some contacts and you put them in the group listing. So and the WhatsApp page. So let's go on. Start be preparing your pitches, different pitches. Don't learn only your pitch. So maybe you are Sibri, you have a pitch on poultry. You can put it down, go and pick a, pick a pitch on technology. Just go to uh, Dragos then, or just go online, pick a business idea, learn to put pieces together, learn to pitch that, and act, be the one pitching and also be in the element of like, you are the consultant, you are the judge. What are the questions you will ask? One, what is your competition? Two, uh, is it a new? And there are two different pitching. Uh, if you are pitching for a new business, it's a different thing altogether. If you are pitching for an existing business, that's where most of the questions come. You ask you questions like, what did you make last year? Are you making profits? If you don't take time, we just lose the battle. So learn, keep learning, and take criticisms. It's going to be tough because someone may ask you a, a question and feel like, my career is over. But you have to come back. Don't be in my situation whereby you also give it back to the judge. <laughs> and he said, uh, no, just, I just look at her and I said, ah. I said, I know, but there are a lot of, People in Ghana, Ghana, they too can speak better English than people in South Africa. I shouldn't have said that. But emotionally, yeah, I was yeah, led yeah. away. Right. And that was like off the hook. Uh -huh. Then after that, we went for, we were, I was there for like 45 minutes. They were asking me questions. They were asking me, I'll come back. They were asking me, a, and this is a new business. I've not even started that business. So it's good to learn to practice, to okay. pitch your ideas. Do you better come in with uh, this one? Which one? <laughs> it just said, uh, I have serious of them. This one, I, I, I don't want to speak off mind. I don't know. So I, I'll hear what my, my judges will say. Fire. Let's go. Yeah. Marsh. Thank you. Marsh, hope you have an idea. <laughs> an idea? Business idea. Not accounting idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go, mm -hmm. go on. Okay. Good evening. Thanks once again. Um, in the year 1985, by then, mm -hmm. that was in Tumutau, a woman by name, Hadja, lived at home 
unfortunately, she couldn't make it to the hospital. Then she lost her child. Fast forward, she bled herself and died. Wow. We are in 2000, 2022. The scenes of 1985 are still repeating it themselves in a different way. I'm the founder of Nurses Clinic, and my name is Balance Brie. Nurses Clinic, what we get to do, we are located in the Upper West region, precisely to Midtown. At the Nurses Clinic, per the name, a clinic is a care we render to people. The name Nurses doesn't necessarily mean we are rendering only to nurses, but we are a group of nurses that are coming together to form a clinic. That's why we call Nurses Clinic. In the Nurses Clinic, we basically do outpatient consultation. Then we do minor surgeries. Then we go into the villages to do outreaches. We do public health consultations as well. We basically reach our customers via social media. We use radio, local radio stations. Then we also track our patients with uh, their phone numbers. We send text messages and we also call them to get them to attend, uh, to come to our clinic. In the day, we basically consult up to 50 to 60 clients a day. These clients are both the NHS holders and cash and carry for uh, patients. Our service is easily accessible because we've realized that within the Tumut town, there's only one government hospital and a series of dotted clinics that are inaccessible due to the bad road nature that interconnects them. So we located in the middle of the town, we fall, it's easier for people to assess us. That is why we started to come as a group of nurses to come up with uh, this nurses clinic. We started a year ago we have encountered a series of challenges, but thank God we've, we've overcome them. And we realized that we need more assistance. So Mr. Mac, uh, Mr. Bash, I know you have once been sick before and you would like to visit us. Gafar, I know you are a health worker. So you would like to work with us. I am, you'll be a mouthpiece. You talk to people about our product, about our product or our project. Um, thank you and you're welcome with your discussions and questions. <laughs> questions <laughs> questions AG Suhini wow that was amazing <laughs> okay this is uh, awesome please I would like to ask how you you, you make money from the consultation or how you will make money yeah i mentioned i stated that we see at least 60 to 100 patients a day and these patients are both nhs carriers and cash and carry uh, I, I attend these those who are cash and carry uh, we consult 15 cd per consultation then if the other laps we will run along the way but those that hold cash uh, the insurance cards what we do is they are captured and we submit the claims to the insurance office that uh, are validated and they pay into our uh, accounts. That's how we raise money. Thank you. So do you do admission? No, for now we are doing only outpatient treatment. Only OPD? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Let me ask this, this question. So, why do you see? Yeah, I would like to know how years? much was your sales last year and and your profit margin. Okay, um, because it's a first year uh, project, it's difficult to get a profit at this time. But aside that, we've gained a lot of experiences. So last year. We started somewhere around, um, that was like, like uh, somewhere around December. So between December, we just raised only 30,000 Ghana CD. 
Um, and this tested canacity is also part of it is used to run the affairs, buying drugs, buying uh, the paying our our, our um, staff as well. So if you want to deduct from the amount we invested, we will be run at a loss. So we will not make any profit at this time. All right. Um, I want to find out, like, where do you see your clinic in the next five years? Wow. You ask, where do you uh, see our clinic in the next five years? That's a great question. You've awakened a spirit that we've, uh, we had in us that we foresee that at least in the next five years, we should be able to have more wars to admit patients. We should be able to run other services like minor surgeries. Um, we should be able to also have a, a resident doctor, either two or three, that can run the affairs. Yeah, and we should be able to do uh, telemedicine. We should be able to communicate with patients and consult them from afar. Yeah, that's what we uh, we anticipate. Okay. Um, my first question has got to do with... Um, you mentioned that. What strategies are you putting in place? Uh, okay. mics? Please to. Can I, can I go ahead? Can I go ahead. Yes. All right. Thank you. So my question is on the fact that you mentioned that the facility is located at the middle of the town. Um, you know that healthcare services, the real need is actually in the periphery, not the main town. So I see that if your target is to improve access to healthcare, then you shouldn't be setting up in the town, but you should rather set at the periphery of the town where the real need is. So I don't know if you have a comment to that. The second question I would also like to ask is, how are you going to troubleshoot the issue of conflict of interest. Um, you mentioned that this is a business that is set up by nurses uh, who are currently employed by the government of Ghana. The facility is situated in the middle of the town, and I presume that these nurses work in hospitals and are paid by the government of Ghana. And how will you prevent issues around conflict of interest where you don't have to, or where you wouldn't direct patients from you know, the public facilities to your facility because you want to make a uh, profit. Okay, thank you. The first question you asked is about the location. Um, it's probably, I didn't put it well, but we look at the number of villages within the uh, Sasala community. So we have, um, let's say, 16. So we started to locate ourselves in the middle whereby the other ones can uh, en route to us not necessarily in the middle of Tumu town. That's what I was trying to put across. Then with reference to the second question, conflict of interest, yes, is something we've been battling with for some time now. Because sometimes our schedules, what I do eight to nine hours a day. So when I close, I come over. My colleague who is also for afternoon is also moving. And we have the other two people who are not employed by the government as of now. So they are constant members. Then we, with those who are employed, we will do the shift and cover up with them. Um, fortunately, we are not in any stand referring patients to our place because the people there are, are already choked. We will be finding it difficult to sort them out. So we know with time, we, we personally will resign and concentrate on our project. Thank you. Questions. Right. Who is on the floor? Let's go. Um, do you know that there are uh, organizations that support um, healthcare system, especially those that are in the rural area? If yes, um, what strategies are you putting in place to reach out to them so that they can support your clinic? 
Please, uh, I don't know who has a question. The, it's, it's, it's fading. Can you come back again, please? Okay. So, Yene, so Yene is asking um, whether you do know that there are organizations that do support clinics in rural areas. Okay. Um, that one, we haven't discovered it yet. Um, but we are still doing more research into it. If you do have any links, you can also provide us so that we'll champion that as well. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Can you please uh, repeat the kind of assistance you are looking for and how much in shares are you parting away? You asked the amount we are looking for. Yes. Yeah, with the amount we are looking for to expand our project, we are looking for at least ah uh, slightly above seventy thousand Ghana CD is okay, and we are not limited to any amount for now, but we are prepared to review our. Our plans depends on the amount that we have or the amount that we get. And if a, um, an investor is ready to come into play, we it's difficult for now to schedule, to tell you the amount we will be giving in percentage Why? Well, we need to sit in a round table, strike, uh, discuss things, then we can tell you the amount you will be getting. I think that's allowable. Okay. Follow up. So, yeah, is there a follow up question? Okay, so I think that this speech actually, you build your confidence now more than the first one. The confidence level increase a little. Right. Because you, you, you kind of like, brought it up in your mind and you were just like it's, a, it's like you own it then but unnecessarily it was too long okay right and at a point i was like you kept on repeating that plea you kept on like there was a lot of repetition and once you cut them up you can do better right okay so and the other thing is that when you, you you finished your presentation, I was looking at it to be an NGO project, not something of a okay. business sort. Because the presentation you did, like, is letting me believe that this is like an NGO type of project. So if I'm coming on board to... Sweeney. Sweeney. Yes. That... <laughs> Okay, well, I was hearing my own voice. So make it a business, right? So, and there are like steps to represent. Yesterday we did storytelling and you started very well with the questions you asked and uh, how you were able to put it. But you kept on the same tone. I didn't see the linear that like going up in terms of like to attract businesses. So if our... I wait to be you, or in my imagination, it's just like kind of like a charity project that you are running. So, but you need to lift it up from that charity level and make sure that it is a business. So, for example, oh, uh, the first question st still stands. And uh, imagine mm -hmm. people dying because of petty or whatever diseases, just because they don't have access to a business uh, like a clinic facility. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa, and of my colleagues, uh, Abdul, AJ, Marsh, the majority leader, and uh, Suhini, we <laughs> form a team of great people. have been able to give this community a great uh, facelift. We've provided a clinic, 
which is a business center entity making money and we hope to make profit. Our ax is 50,000 cities and we are using this 50,000 to buy some of the beds. We need beds, we need equipment. We need some of the modern gadgets to be able to what? Facilitate the process. So if you come in, if Richmond has money, as his name sounds, and you can invest like 40,000 cities or 70,000 Ghana cities, in the next three years, we should be able to pay you off and give you 10% on top of your principal. We are willing to talk. So if you are interested, just give me a call. Let's have a round table and the terms very well. But then you are all welcome because we are solving the need of health care. Okay. okay. Right. Thank so you. it's good. The way you started is good because you got our attention. You like you made us believe that this is a problem that you are solving, and we can help if we come in. Right, we can help a lot of people save souls. We can help, but you didn't like kind of like anchor the business aspect. So it's good if you are raising funds in terms of charity. That would have been a good story. Whereby maybe, and that's why Suhini is asking you that do you know that they are organizations because uh, Hopping Academy, they receive people who give like monies either to business or to charity, like donations and fundraising and stuff. So you need to look at it in all sectors. If you are going business, go low, small, pick it high. So that someone was, okay, if I invest 70000 I can get my money back. Because if it's a charity project, I just give donations, just like the projects I do. If it's charity, I go, I know I'm not getting any money back. I just put in something small, and I'm good to go. So if you are listening, this is, uh, this is the public speaking practice session. And we have great people. We have Marsh the Commando. We have AJ. We have uh, Abdul. Uh, we have Suyini. We have Sibri. And uh, we have the, the only rich, rich, rich man on this platform. So thank you very much. Come up, practice your speech, practice your public speaking, make a lot of mistakes. Yes, that's good. And uh, we are not, we are not uh, from England. We are in Ghana, but we are able to use English to communicate. <laughs> I don't think there's, <laughs> if you bring anybody from England, they can speak our local dialects, right? But we are trying. So also come up, make mistakes. They will laugh at you. That's okay. No, that's fine. Especially the type of schools we went to, right? We just like book the careful type of English, but we are able to manage. Mm -hmm. So you can equally come up and speak. <laughs> so my name once again is Ibrahim Mustafa. We are live on Facebook. We are live, live on LinkedIn. We are live on YouTube and also on my radio, which is I am radio. So if you just Google I am radio, you should be able to catch us live doing that, which is global. So ready go so if someone has a question someone has something to say if you have a pitch you can start practice practicing that and uh we move and we keep if you have questions to bring them out and let's do justice to that mash yes do you have any story any story yes <laughs> okay Let's go. Mash. Yes. yes. I start the story. Mash will just raise your hopes and ask you that what type of story. <laughs> right. So we did a um, uh, storytelling yesterday. And, uh, but uh, off hook. I want you to know that if you want to take your speaking far, write books, okay? Publish books. And it's easy for any one of you to publish books. You can publish them on Amazon. Don't be looking for people who will tell you that your book is not good, your book is not interesting, and they will judge you. No, you can publish books on Amazon, and it gives you authority. I have a lot of books on Amazon. Just today, I published one, and... Uh, 
it has given me and um, books they've given me it's a call card whereby people will just be buying things on amazon they see your name and they buy a product from you and they say okay i want you to speak at my event because i saw your book right and above all you make money from it so don't be afraid to write books publish books don't be afraid to publish books and today my the book i publish is like on leadership it's just about leadership so any one of you can equally do that and the more you publish the more you get better the more you publish the more you get better for example uh, i'm just getting a book okay my first published book this is my first book when i published first the confident speaker this was my first book and it took me like five good years to publish this book because I didn't know and I was scared and I was asking questions. I wanted people to say, oh, it's good, it's good, publish it before I publish. So this book was on my uh, laptop for close to three years. Manuscript zero. I was I finished the book, like everything, manuscript, 100% done. And But I was still afraid to publish until uh, uh, flooding got into our room where I was in Tamale and destroyed the laptop. I couldn't recover it. I had to start again. So two years, I wrote it again, but I was still afraid. I asked people like, oh, uh, Mash, oh, I want to publish a book. Or ask somebody, oh, and people who I believed in. Maybe so you have mentors. My mentors, uh, I believed in people in society who are doing good. I feel like, okay, they have PhD sense. I'll go and ask them, oh, I want to write a book. And in my mind, I was thinking, that, oh, they'll say, oh, good, young man, do it. Sometimes they will tell you that Africans don't read. So if you write, <laughs> what I write the book for? So I'll go back home. Low morale. Mm -hmm. It has been that, like I've been doing that consistently until one day I said, maybe if Africans write, Africans will read. Maybe because we are not having a lot of books, that's why we are not reading. Then I just said, I'm going to write this book. So I had one lady who were to review this book, and I used the proposal formula. Yeah, I like proposals. I used to like proposals. I said, I'm going to write proposals, and I'm going to get people to use my first pages to publish, their, uh, to market their businesses. So I'll make money because I, at that time I couldn't afford to uh, go and print and stop. So I kept on, I wrote a lot of proposals, I kept sharing them. Unfortunately, someone who I was working with for the book bought these two pages. So you see that the first two pages of this book is someone's business information and the contact and stuff. So they bought the two pages and out of that money, I was able to print like 2,000 copies. I had a lot of money to do my promotion, to do whatever. So this book, any penny that comes in is just like money to spend. It has been paid for. So you mm -hmm. see, I was afraid. But then I had whatever it is to publish. But if you publish, will people judge you? Yes, they will look at you. They will look into your book and tell you the mistakes that are there. And when you pay the book, <laughs> you see the mistakes because that's their problem. They can't see you write a book as a young African. This one thing we need to like help our colleagues go through. Someone will pick your book and say, I saw a spelling mistake there. I used to like feel bad, but I realized that when you pick John C. Maxwell, all the great books, you find mistakes. But people still buy and they keep buying. So you can publish, learn to publish too, to tell your story. If you want to go into leadership, going further, some of you will specialize into different areas. Maybe you want to talk about leadership, whereby you start an organization, you do start doing leadership trainings. Uh, people, some of you have you've already taken steps to do go, uh, like to, to identify your niche, like Richmond. He wants to go into finance, and he's talking about financial independence, right? So you can write books about like finances. It organize events about finances. Do seminars about finances. If you don't have the capacity to speak, that is not a problem. Get a venue, get someone who is into that sector, 
to come and be your co-speaker. The person will be the main speaker and you'll be the supporting speaker doing the announcements, but you are getting the experience. Will people enter your events? That is not a guarantee, depending on how you market it. Oh. Because I could quite... I could quite remember I went to UDS. I'm on the UDS. This is only uh, this school I don't want. Navrongo campus. I did Vanes in Tamil. I gave it to this SRC. Uh, it was Nook's president, local Nook's president. I did Vanes, like, and oh, he will call me, oh, Mr. Ibrahim. Oh, there's hope. Oh, people are liking the, oh, the, the event. So I was having hope, young speaker, preparing. Ah, the D day I, I, I was about to start and I called him. Ah, Asa, the event is uh, tomorrow morning, so I'm coming this evening. He said, ah, that, uh, the, 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 the time is up like that. I was already <laughs> in the car. I knew that there was a problem. I got there on Saturday. Yes, my banner was on campus. I went and stood in front of my banner. I was reading. I said, hey, then they soap. I sat down and I called this guy. That, hey, that has forgotten me. They have some pool party. So he is there. So when he come, <laughs> that was like, I got there like, I was there like 7.30. The event was supposed to start at 9. Pool party, he didn't come back. So I was just sitting, my bag was there, I was sitting like this. I said, hey, what will I do? So nine, nine o'clock, no sign of him, he didn't call back, nobody called. So I picked my bag. There was a class going on, even though it was a Saturday, but there was a class going on. I went, got a class, empty class, right? Got equipment, like uh, speaking, like microphone, whatever, just rented it from Navrongo town. Some mini thing that I can speak and it's too loud. I got to that class that was like in session. I greeted a lecturer and I said, oh, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. We're supposed to have a program, but I came and it's like things are not going on well. The student didn't come. So I just want two minutes to speak to his class. It was a large class. At the end of the day, so that if people are willing to come, they can come and join for free. So I, he said, okay, I should hang around. When he's about to close, he'll call me. He called me, and I just went and poured my heart out. Talked to them about the benefits. And at the end of the day, 20 people turned up. And I presented and left the city. <laughs> so when you start, some of these things will happen. You go and no one is there. You are the only speaker. Sometimes you use your event and practice. Just use the venue that you rented and practice and go back home. Mm -hmm. So these are things that will happen as to you when you are speakers. So don't feel bad, but they are preparing you, testing your patience. Sometimes you feel like giving up. I'm telling you, it's going to work out. So write books, publish books. It's going to, be, it's, it's going to help you. I'm telling you. You make money from the books. If you publish books and you want to only make money in Ghana, forget. I've, I don't know of any speaker who is making money in, like in Ghana selling books, his own books, right? The men's hotel bills, they sell like and make money because they have large crowds. But if you're a new speaker, please forget. Just use Amazon and promote it well. Imagine this book. I was selling it 20 cities. The buying was not there like that. But on Amazon, it's $16. Right? The ebook is like, uh, the, the ebook, candle book is, because I have a lot of books, I don't even remember, but I priced it like $9.99. So you can equally just use only books. Keep publishing them. Keep publishing them. And you make a lot of income. I want to share with you my best-selling book. And my best-selling book is not like any motivational book or public. No, no, no. It's not, no, no, no. My best-selling book is just quotations. I'm just going to share you with you in a, in a minute. Uh, Proverbs. 
And tomorrow I'm going to do a replica of it, African <laughs> Proverbs. A best-selling book, among all the books I have, let me share my screen for you to see. There are mistakes I won't let you, I won't let you make. Whether you are my brother or sister, no, I won't let you make those mistakes. There are books. So why is that one? Amazing. So my best-selling book, hope you can see my screen. Yeah, it's loaded, yes. Right. So this is my best-selling book. This book. The Book of African Proverbs. You can see Brian Mustafa. It has like 82 ratings. And the paperback is $9.99. This book, I've sold more copies of this book. And every day, I sell like three or two of this book. And it's just like compilation of books that are found on the internet. Like not books, but uh, proverbs. Collection of proverbs. I ask people to tell me proverbs. African authentic proverbs. I can say say Mrs. Salah proverbs, like in English form. And they'll compile them. And I'll just put them together. And I've been selling this book since uh, 20... It's like 2020, yeah? Published yeah. in 2020. Uh, yes, and this book has made me a lot of money. So people will tell you the motivational books that you see will not make you money. And that's a secret. People don't buy those books on Amazon. If they don't know you, they will not buy those books. But then simple books, leadership quotations, you compile them because like they are royalty free. Nobody owes them, right? Nobody owns those books. Yeah. So you can actually make a lot of money publishing <laughs> books. And this book, I sell like three every day. Almost like every day, I sell three copies. Almost every day, I sell three copies. So you, you can see, just compiling books and using Canva. And I use Canva to do uh, this. I use Canva to do my designs. Who is coming and joining? And I use Canva to do my designs. If you can see Canva, and uh, Richmond knows into Canva, so I use Canva to do my uh, what is it? Your cover this pages. Canva. I use my cover pages. I don't wait for someone to do cover pages. You see, this is all the books I published last week. This book. This. And this is the one I just published today. Inspirational Leadership 2.0, 2.0. So I just want you to believe in yourself a little, lift yourself up a little, and do the work. There are simple strategies that you can use to make additional or passive income, right? There are like basic things that if you use them, Sorry, Abdul. Sorry, because I was doing my screen, I didn't see that you were down. So there are little things that you need to, as a speaker, it's going to keep you moving. And also, once you are done with speaking, don't just look for like complicated books. It's now that I'm doing like affiliate marketing books, how to write, publish a course. And these are all intentional because I'm using YouTube to market whatever, right? So I can, once people go to my YouTube, they buy my books. And that's why I'm publishing a lot of books these days, again. But then the secret is if you want to stay relevant and make passive income, pop, learn to publish books. And what I'm talking about, you can just YouTube, go on to YouTube and learn to do it today. You just need to be dedicated. You just need to like, you see where I'm sitting. When I wake up, I, my shadow is like, um, I wake up like 7.30. First, I'll wake up like five o'clock and pray. Go back to bed. When I wake up, 7.30, just brush, eat, bath. This is where I sit. And I'm going to be here till 12, sometimes 1 p.m., uh, 1 a.m. Then I'll go to sleep because I'm publishing books. I'm writing. I'm doing courses. So 
it's not like magic formula. If you put in the work, you are already online. Put in the little work, and it's going to help you. So as a speaker, put in the work, and know how to reach out to international audience. That will elevate you. So this is my advice for you today, and I believe that I want to see you doing great things, and uh, get the collaborations, go international, cut the big uh, deals. Just with uh, any ambassador you want to meet, just meet the person and just chat about life. But if you, if you are not like, if you are not hard, you can't do it. If you don't give yourself that honor, that kind of like hustling uh, mode, you need to put in some work. Just find out what works for you online. Do your things all right. Do your offline things, right? But find out whatever works for you online, put in the content. If it is uh, ebooks, put in the content. If it is uh, courses, you all have talents. Abdul Gafar can do courses about CV, uh, job search. Uh, so you can do the same. Uh, Abdul, you have great ideas. Uh, Richmond is already into one, so one or two things. Uh, Mash, accounting, I don't know where to place you. Accountant, <laughs> the money man, and uh, balance civil can you can also equally do a lot consultancy. Like all of you can do consultancy here, right? So put in the work, think about it, rephrase, ask yourself, what am I using public speaking to do? How can public speaking help me market my stuff? And to me, apart from speaking to make money on stage. And selling my courses, public speaking has helped me to sell my products, i.e., my online courses. And any one of you can do online courses. Yes. yes. Which which of the yeses are you doing? Is it yesterday's yes? It's or like the one? next. My network is not exactly why I'm saying because he's in yesterday. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. So you can follow me on YouTube like uh, Richmond is saying. Follow and uh, it will help me to give me that list. If you also want I to start hear what YouTube, you are saying. Yes, I know. Network. Can you hear me? Okay. So uh, finally, before we, because time is gone, the next Hello, thing I want I to can, encourage you. I can hear you, but. Um... Uh, Suyini, can you hear me? Yeah, this is big. Right. Uh, life will have challenges like that. My network is not so, stable. Okay, make it stable. Catch it. <laughs> you are going to be stable. So, the last thing I want to leave you with is that, and don't just learn the speaking, put it into action, okay? Me growing up, I started seeing courses, online courses, but I didn't, like, I don't see most Ghanaians doing online courses on Udemy. We have, like, I have friends who maybe have courses, like uh, Bernard, uh, Calvin Klein, he has a lot of courses. But, like, when I go, I don't see... Most of other people doing courses, but we all have talents. I see people in India, I see people like in different countries putting in courses, and their English sometimes is not that good, but they are forced, they are pushing it. And I say, I'm going to do online courses. And the advice is that any one of you today you can do online courses. I'm telling you, my first course was my next good. web. Hello, Shaman. My network was not stable, so I was not hearing what. But now you can hear. There's a recording of this. Go and listen to it. You, you hear it. So sorry for that. But I'm just talking about online courses. Yeah. Right. As people who have like uh, aspirations, you have ideas. You, don't worry if you don't have ideas. You can Google about ideas. And pick one idea and make it your whole life. That's what you are going to run with. Like me, public speaking, 
keynote speaking. That's what I want to do. But the books I have, I have like close to like a lot of books online. My courses are not many. I want to share with you uh, on Udemy how you can write and also do publish your courses, make impact. Any one of you should you start thinking about courses. Start thinking about courses. Then I'll share with you this program that I'm doing. This program that I'm doing every day. I can make it a course, online course, and I start selling it. I can start selling what I'm just saying now. So you don't need to like do any professional. No, no, just where you are, what you can do, and you are good to go. So this is my this this is my course page, maybe to help someone to start. I wanted to do something on uh, Udemy. There are C courses. People are selling courses like over one million courses on Udemy, but I don't see courses I relate to. So I also said, let me do courses. So if you can see the stage, this is my course. Let me give it a better view. This is uh, this is my course page. So this is like this is this was my first course, the self confidence mastery. I didn't do well at all this course. I just did screen recording. I didn't have the gadgets. But see, it has like twenty eight reviews. And God being so wonderful, I just said, oh, let me do it again because. And it's, you can see it's 19 point whatever dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is the, my total number of students. I have like 10,315 students. And that spans from 60 different countries. Right? 60 different countries. And it's the same English that me and you are speaking that I use on my courses. So as speakers, as you are practicing, learn to use it. If you don't learn to use the knowledge, we are going back to square one. You come back and say, ah, but it's like, I'm learning this thing, but it's like, whenever I go on stage, it's the same. It's going to be the same because you are not practicing. You are not actually making some income from it. So you don't even see the reason why you need to speak. And that's why most, of, most organizations do. They don't know why they need to train their staff on public speaking. They don't understand why they need to train their staff on public about like to speak. But this is actually an essential skill that you need to train your staff, even your family. You need to bring them, let them learn to speak before one day they will disgrace you. They will, you come and you, you, are, you are watching TV and you see your family, your wife or your family member giving eyewitness report. Huh? Something happens and they say they put the camera on that person and say, I witness of you were there. Give a detailed report. <laughs> and that's where you see you see wonders. You'll be there if you feel like. And they'll take her videos and put on the uh, TikTok, short short videos, how someone is butchering English. But then these are some of the reasons why we need to speak. So if you have questions, let them come. In the area of ebooks, in the area of like uh Courses, online courses, but then start thinking about them. Just do one hour course and put it on Udemy. And you sell that for the rest of your life. One day I'll talk about YouTube and the opportunities it has. Questions, it's been wonderful having all of you. Mash, question. AJ, questions. If there are no questions, we just run up by doing our introductions. The introductions, you don't know, but it helps for people to buy our services. For you to tell the world what you are into. And for you to create opportunities for yourself. So, AJ, uh, Richmond, go first. I am Richmond Hassan, a financial consultant. I teach people about financial independence. I'm also an, an importer. I import stores from China at a very cheap price. 
And I said to those sales advocates, if you are interested, kindly contact me. Thank you very much. Right, AJ, majority leader. Good evening. My name is Abdul Gafar. I see TV right. And a business consultant at AG Professional Services. We are into the providing of uh, job requirement documents for job applicants, such as CVs, cover letters, application letters, and we also provide scholarship documents such as statement of purpose and others. We also serve entrepreneurs with business proposals and business plans. So basically, that's what we do. And you can reach us on Facebook at AG Professional Services. Thank you. Great, great. I come for business uh, proposal. Uh, Sibri, the commando. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for hanging around. It's been a nice day. We at Rafaela, I'm Ines by name, and I'm also um, I'm by name Balon Sibri. Aside healing people and fixing fractures. We're also uh, serving you ready, locally, race, process, chicken. One guinea fowl can help you out. If one X, uh, for now we're out of X, but if one then we can also arrange them for you. Yeah, we are all there to help each other to make Africa better, Ghana better, our homes and our communities better. We are ready to help each other. Thank you. Who goes Abdul? Great. All right, great. Um, great to have all of you. My name is Abdul Jalil. Um, I'm a solutions architect. Um, so I'm also the CEO of 360 uh, Solutions. So I actually will be able to help in any other thing that you do, um, be it technology, be it farming, be it any other thing. I come with very great ideas. Um, I'm a fantastic critic as well. And I'll be able to help in any other project that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uncle Mash. Mash. I think Mash, Mash is already in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, my name is Brian Mustafa once again. I'm a public speaking coach and uh, I do online courses and I help people to find their voice. And that's my passion, helping people find their voice. So, anytime you have an opportunity and you want to speak in public, you want to train your organization, I'm always willing to help. But then, today I just want you to know that whatever you learn, Try to apply it and go out there, help someone. Go out there and make the world better. Don't shy away from the helping people. Help people just because you want to help people and you want to help make the world better. There are things that you may not see now. I'm telling you, but people praying for you is also like an added advantage. There are projects that I do, like uh, philanthropy projects that I just go to somewhere. They want donations about this weaving machines. I give them out. Why? Not because I'm that rich, though, but because I know that I know the pain of not having. I know the pain of not having a voice, whereby people don't believe in you. People doubt you. People see like, you as a disturbance just because you cannot afford what you want today. So let's all stand up and create opportunities for ourselves and know that the little prayers that people pray for you, it makes a difference. Today, like I told you in my first presentation, I was just walking out, right? And someone tried to snatch my phone. And you can see the cover, I can't even place it, but this is the phone. The phone that I've invested a lot in buying, I use that for my videos. Like for my videos, my walk on Zoom, 
and so we just snatch it like that. But God's been so wonderful. It fell off, and they also sped off. And I took my phone. Nothing happened to it. <laughs> and like to me, it's due to prayers. Assuming they were having a gun, I would just say yes and give the phone out. Or they had even, but like, just because I believe in prayers, I believe that like, just be honest. Just go out there and do whatever you are supposed to do. If you have knowledge, give it out to people. Let them also do. If you want to publish book, if you publish book, let other people also do it if they can do it. Right, and that's why we are doing this public speaking practice for you to practice and go out and teach what we practice. Believe you me, there are a lot of people who are afraid to speak in public from ministers, members of parliaments, uh, lawyers, judges. Right, yeah, you see them on, in court, all right, but they tell you that they are scared, they are afraid, they cannot speak outside their courtroom. I had a lecturer from one of the top universities in Ghana. And he came to me for public speaking coaching. I said, you've been teaching, you've been lecturing. He says, anytime he's going to go into the classroom, he has to take alcohol so that it will ginger him. Without the alcohol, he cannot speak. So it's a big problem. And any one of you can just today say, okay, I've learned enough from this speaking. And I'm going to use that to train people, become a public speaking coach, Practice more, you make money out of it. That's the Thank secret. You. you make money out of it. So go out, use whatever you have, organize events, and don't give up. And don't give up. Whether in life, in business, you can make it. Thank you very much for always joining. Let's keep in touch and uh, let's do more. So tomorrow is also another day, but let's plan. I'm planning for the pitch competition. So since Abdul is here, I think you'll be one of the judges, <laughs> right? Uh, you see, uh, Ma uh, Balon is already laughing because <laughs> Balon doesn't want <laughs> that type of questions. Yeah. But uh, so that we'll give back to society. Like, uh, yeah. we have to. We have to. So that maybe if it is 200 cities a month or 100 or 1,000 cities, the winner, we just do it plain. Okay, you've won. You've pitched, you've won, take it. Anyone can pitch. Every month, if you are the best in pitching, every month you win. But then, let's do it, and let's keep impacting. So tomorrow, we'll meet again. I am, All right. I'm out. All right, thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful night. Of All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. AJ, uh, Max, <laughs> hope you can see this. Thank you. Yes. I see. Thank you very much. <laughs>